Hi there, my name is Todd Lesky, and this is a quick demonstration on how to perform vector addition as it applies to electrical students. Let's start with the basics. By definition, a vector is a force that has two distinct properties, direction and magnitude. In electrical theory, voltage is the force that acts upon free electrons in our circuits. The magnitude of that force would be the quantity of voltage itself, and the direction is determined by the polarity of the source. Adding more force in the same direction has an aiding effect on the circuit, and the overall magnitude becomes the combination of the two forces added together. However, if the second force is connected in series with the opposite polarity, the two forces counteract one another. The quantity of this resultant force would be the net difference between the two forces, and its direction would be dictated by the larger of the two. This is easily demonstrated in DC circuits, but things get a little more complex when we're connected to an AC supply. For now, let's assume that certain types of forces act together directly, and others act indirectly. In AC, depending on the type of circuit, some elements are constants and other elements are said to be in or out of phase. When concerned with these phase relationships, we're required to perform vector analysis, and mathematical calculations that involve vector addition. In the following example, Vector 1 has a magnitude of 5 volts, and we see its direction by looking at its placement on the Cartesian coordinate system. Vector 1 sits at an angle of 0 degrees. If we were to plot the position of Vector 1's arrowhead, it would be at plus 5, comma 0. Let's add a second vector that applies force in a different direction at the same time. Vector 2 is also 5 volts in magnitude and sits at positive 270 or negative 90 rotational degrees. With regard to Vector 1, Vector 2 is said to lag Vector 1 by 90 degrees. Vector 2's arrowhead sits at 0, comma, negative 5. Mathematically, we must recognize that every vector has an x and a y component. And even if one of those values is 0, we still need to take that into account. The next step is to chart all of the vector coordinates using the Cartesian values with their appropriate polarities. Once charted, we simply add up each column to determine the net values of x and y. These values indicate the final coordinates of our resultant vector. From here, the final step is to determine the overall magnitude and direction of our resultant vector by applying simple trigonometry. Using Pythagoras, we find that the resultant vector or net force is 7.071 volts, and this is being applied at an angle of negative 45 positive 315 degrees, which puts us in quadrant 4. Labeling the vector in polar form completes the process. Adding more vectors will have an effect on the resultant coordinates and will work with or against all of the other forces. To determine the net effect, simply add each set of Cartesian values into the chart. Let's say that vector 3 is a 7 volt vector applying force at positive 90 degrees. Its final coordinates end at positive 7, comma 0. Adding those coordinates to the original chart, we see that the new resultant coordinates end at plus 5, comma plus 2 in quadrant 1. Draw in the resultant and then use trigonometry to determine the magnitude and angle of our resultant vector and label the resultant values in polar form. In the previous examples, all of the applied forces have been either perfectly vertical or horizontal. However, many forces don't fall on the x or y axes. Adding these types of vectors can become a little more complex because we need to use trig to find the individual x and y values of each vector before adding the values to our chart. Finding resultant values using multiple vectors that apply force in varying angles will be the subject of our next lesson. The preceding presentation was created as part of the 3240 course for the Provincial Instructor's Diploma Program in July of 2015. My name is Todd Lesky, and my instructor is Brian Castle. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0 International License. For more information about that license, please go to creativecommons.org slash licenses. Created using Powtoon.